Rode's lineup of affordable video mics can definitely level up the audio in your videos. But which one is right for you? In this video, I'm gonna compare the sound quality and features of the Rode Video Micro 2, the Video Mic Go 2, and the Video Mic NTG. So if you're looking for a video microphone solution that does not involve buying extra gear in addition to the mic itself, then Rode's video mic lineup deserves a closer look. Right now you're not hearing audio from any of them, you're hearing my Sennheiser MKE 600 recording separately from the camera, but in just a moment I'll start giving you audio samples of each of these microphones in a few different scenarios. I also want to point out I don't have my usual sound treatment for my room set up for this video because I want to give you a sense of what these microphones sound like if you don't have a bunch of sound treatment in your space. All three of these microphones are capable of connecting directly to your camera or to a smartphone or tablet with a 3.5 millimeter cable. But two of them, the VideoMic Go 2 and the VideoMic NTG also include a USB-C connection which enables you to connect to your computer as well as to smartphones and tablets with a digital connection rather than the 3.5 millimeter one. And that USB capability also unlocks some additional processing capabilities, which we'll take a look at on the computer and in a couple of Rode's mobile apps as well. First, let me just mention the prices of each of these, then we'll start walking through the features and we'll get into some sound samples. So the Video Micro 2 goes for $79, the Video Mic Go 2 goes for $99, and the Video Mic NTG goes for $249. So let's start talking about features here. Right out of the gate, I just wanna point out the main differences between these three and then we'll dig into some details. So the Video Micro being the most affordable, this is the one that does not feature a USB connection. This only has a 3.5 millimeter TRS output. However, Rode does supply you with a TRS to TRRS cable in the box so that you can actually connect this microphone directly to a smartphone or even the uh, the combo jack on your laptop. But there are no additional features that you can unlock by connecting this to any device. What you see is what you get with the Video Micro. So the main difference there between the Micro, the Go 2, and the NTG is that these two have the USB connection. And when you connect them over that digital connection, either to a smartphone, tablet, or computer, that's where you unlock some additional features. And then the main difference between the Go 2 and the NTG is going to be that the NTG brings some physical controls and it also has a built-in battery with gain control right here on the microphone. So being able to turn the level up here and then turn it down in your camera means less noise in your recording. I'll give you a sample of that in just a minute. So that's the high level differences between these three. Now let's get into some audio samples of each one and then I'll talk some more about the features, especially of these two, which have some more processing capabilities to unlock when we use the USB connection. First up, we're gonna do audio samples of all three of these in two different positions. So first, you're gonna hear audio samples as if these were mounted on my camera. So that's gonna be about a distance of four feet away from me right now with my current setup. And then I'm going to move them to a position so they are boomed about eight inches away from me. So you can hear the audio difference for all three in both of those positions. Okay, so I had to reshoot the sample for the Video Micro 2 because the first time around, I actually didn't set the levels properly and ruined the recording. So bonus tip, make sure you set your levels properly before you hit record. But this is the sample of the Video Micro 2 mounted over the camera, and this is how it's sounding. This is an audio sample of the Video Mic Go 2 mounted on the camera about four feet away, and this is how it sounds. And this is an audio sample of the Video Mic NTG also mounted on top of the camera about four feet away, and this is how it sounds. One thing I wanna point out here that's different from the other two is that for both of these microphones that don't have any of their own gain control, I had the input level set to a seven on the Sony a7 IV. And for this sample, I was able to turn the input level on the camera down to a three because I have the gain control on the Video Mic NTG set to 11. And just to give you a sample of the opposite setup, I've now turned the gain on the Video Mic NTG down to a three, but I've had to increase the level on the camera up to 20. So you, now you should be able to hear if there's more noise or less noise one way or the other. This is an audio sample of the Video Micro 2 mounted on a boom about eight inches away from my mouth, and this is how it's sounding. This is an audio sample of the Video Micro 2 mounted on a boom about eight inches away from my mouth, and this is how it's sounding. And this is a sample of the Video Mic Go 2, now positioned on a boom arm about eight inches away from me, and I have the camera audio input level set to a seven. 
And this is a sample of the VideoMic Go 2, now positioned on a boom arm about eight inches away from me, and I have the camera audio input level set to a seven. And now this is a sample of the VideoMic NTG positioned on a boom arm about eight inches away from me. And for this, I have the camera level turned back down to a three and the gain on the VideoMic NTG set to 11. And now this is a sample of the VideoMic NTG positioned on a boom arm about eight inches away from me. And for this, I have the camera level turned back down to a three and the gain on the VideoMic NTG set to 11. All right, so that's how all three of these sound, both either camera mounted a little bit further away from you or boom mounted. Personally, I just wanna point out that if you are using the microphones in that setup where the camera is three to four feet or potentially further away from you and you're doing a talking head video like this, getting the microphone mounted on a boom or anything you can that's closer to you is definitely the way to go. You should have noticed better quality audio really when the microphones, all three of them, were mounted closer to me. I wanna talk about some other use cases for these microphones and we'll talk about the more advanced features of the GoTo and the NTG as well. So first let's talk about the potential for using these as vlogging microphones. Now as far as vlogging use, I would have to say my recommendations would either be the micro or the GoTo. Now if you want the USB capability, obviously you've gotta go with the GoTo. There's not a huge price difference here though, so if you wanna be able to unlock some additional processing and connect digitally rather than with the 3.5 millimeter cable, then the GoTo would be the way to go. They're both very lightweight. Obviously the lightest and smallest one is gonna be the micro, but both of them are very, very compact and very lightweight. So now let's talk about the GoTo and the NTG a little bit more as far as the extra features they have that go beyond what the micro offers. When you connect either of these microphones to a smartphone, tablet, or computer over USB, you'll be able to enable some additional processing with both of these. The main difference here between these two is that the NTG gives you control over some features with physical buttons. Specifically, you can control the high pass filter at 75 or 150 Hertz. You have a high frequency boost, which is something you may wanna use if you have the big windscreen on it outdoors. There's also a minus 20 dB pad and a safety track. Now the safety track comes in handy because when you have that enabled, it records records one of the channels. So you have left and you have right channels. It records one of the channels at the regular level that you've set. And then the second channel will be recorded at 20 dB lower than your main channel. So that means if you accidentally get too loud, record a sound that's too loud and it clips on the main channel, you'll have a safety track, a second track that was recorded with a minus 20 dB level. And you can basically just swap that little segment of the audio out in post and you'll have audio that didn't clip. But if you're using either of Rode's free mobile apps, the capture app for video or the reporter app for recording audio, Audio, the wireless go to actually has more features that are available in software than the NTG. So let me connect the wireless go to over USB to my iPhone 14 and I'll show you what I mean. All we have to do is connect Rhodes supplied USB C cable. The other end we're going to connect into the uh, lightning to USB adapter. This is also called the camera adapter. And then we're going to connect this to the iPhone. All right, so right now I have the Rode VideoMic NTG connected to my phone using the Rode Capture app. Just wanna let you know, you're not gonna be hearing the audio from this because in order to actually get a recording where you can see the screen controls that you have, I had to mirror my phone screen to my computer and then use OBS to capture that screen. But that's okay, because I really just wanna show you what the controls are in the Rode Capture app for these two microphones. So if you have the NTG connected, all you have to do is come up to the top left corner of the screen here and touch that microphone icon. It expands your audio menu here. It'll tell you, it knows you've got the video mic NTG connected, but you'll notice you don't have any other controls. You can control the level, but there are no other advanced controls here. So all you're gonna have are the physical control buttons that are on the video mic NTG. And the same thing will be true if you're using Rode's audio recorder app, the Rode Reporter app. All right, and now I have the Rode video mic go to connected here. So let's go back to our audio settings again. You'll see now this is recognizing the video mic go to, and we see some additional controls here that weren't there with the video mic NTG. So, and if we hit this down arrow, you'll actually see even more options. In the top portion, you still have your gain control, your level control. Then you've actually got an option to direct monitor, which is because uh, it has a 3.5 millimeter output that you can use to monitor your audio. Your high pass filter is here. It's currently set to 75 Hertz, but you also have 150 Hertz or off. You have a, an option to engage a pad here. And then in the bottom section that expands, here you have a high frequency boost, a compressor, 
a noise gate, aural exciter, and big bottom. These are advanced processing that you can choose to bake into the audio of your video if you would like to. So that's just the difference between the video uh, mic go to and the video mic NTG when it comes to the features that are available in Rhodes 2 mobile apps. Now let's take a look at the difference in the features they have if you use them on a computer with Rhodes Connect app. Okay, so this is the Rode Connect app. I just wanna show you the features of the VideoMic NTG and the VideoMic Go 2. If you click on the image of the microphone, that's where it pops open some additional features. And here you can see we actually have some more features that are available on the VideoMic NTG than what we had with the mobile apps with the Rode Capture app. We did not have any of these features. Now remember the buttons, the pad, the presence boost, those are all there in physical buttons on the VideoMic NTG. One thing I wanna show you though is that I have not had luck using these extra features with the video mic NTG specifically in Rode Connect. Let me just show you what I mean. Right now I'm using OBS to capture this and I have the video mic NTG selected as the audio source. But let me go ahead and enable all of these processing features which you know potentially could be things that you might wanna use to make yourself sound a little more polished in a video call or something like that. But now I think you should be noticing, I'm hearing whenever I enable these, I hear some types of distortion. It sounds, it sounds like I'm clipping to me. And if I come back over to OBS, I'm not clipping. This should not sound like it's clipping. But for some reason, whenever I enable all of this processing using Rode Connect with the video mic NTG only, uh, I wind up hearing some distortion. That doesn't sound good. In my experience so far, I have to get rid of everything except for the high pass filter in order to get back to that like nice clean audio sound with the video mic NTG. I wanted to point out, even though these features are here in the Rode Connect app, when you're using the video mic NTG, I can't personally use the result with them, at least not in its current state. Uh, so hopefully this is something they can fix with a firmware update. Okay, and now, so let's just do a quick sample with the VideoMic Go 2, because I actually don't experience that issue with the VideoMic Go 2. So I'm not sure what the difference is, but now we've got our VideoMic Go 2 connected. And again, this is currently just the clean audio with the 75 Hertz high pass filter. And let's go ahead and enable all of the processing here. So now we've got all the processing enabled and the high pass filter, and this is what it's sounding like. And so with the video my go to using all of these processing features, I have not experienced the same issues that I have with the NTG. So as far as I can tell, it is safe to use any of the processing uh, on your computer when you're using this over USB. Overall, I think both of these microphones are great choices for using as off camera microphones for your video calls. Just know that if you wanted to use those advanced DSP features, it seems to actually work better with the video mic go to so there you have it the Rode video mic go to and the video mic ntg are packed with features especially if you're using Rode's free supplied software the Rode connect app with your computer if you're going to be using mobile apps exclusively for your recording say you're doing youtube shorts or tiktok videos and you're going to be recording everything with a mobile phone i personally would recommend the video mic go to as my top choice it is super lightweight and compact the processing features that are available in Rode's Capture app and Rode Reporter app for recording audio are actually better with the Go 2 than they are with the NTG. If your setup is more non-mobile, if you're not moving around a whole lot, you're making videos maybe like this one where you're a talking head, your camera doesn't really go anywhere. You don't really need your microphone to be really small and lightweight. The video mic NTG I really like because of the physical buttons that it has, as well as the built-in gain control so you can keep the gain on your camera nice and low. I like the safety track feature a lot as well. And I just like that you don't have to use that USB connection to a computer to get access to the additional features. Either one of these is also a fantastic work from home microphone to use for a video call setup because they have USB connectivity. So I think the video mic NTG would be my top choice if you're using this as a work from home video call microphone and you cannot install Rode Connect and you really just can't enable any software features of the microphone. But which one do you think is right for you? Let me know in the comments which one you think is the best value for the money out of these three and which one you think has the features that fit your needs best. Also, let me know if this video was helpful. If it was, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button so YouTube can show it to more people. Don't forget to subscribe to the Semi-Pro Tech and Gear channel if you wanna be notified when I come out with future videos. Thanks everybody. See you next time.